Welcome here to an all new From Mother's Cover to Table, where I get to break bread with people in our community here in Central and Upstate New York and enjoy our time together here at Mother's Cover on 3709 James Street in Syracuse, open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Rob and I had my special, my own sandwich here, the Cuse McMother, and Rob's come here and gotten it himself. I, I like that. Of all the things that I've tried from like day zero, you were like, because you, you you were here when we unveiled it, Correct. and like it was closed here, and and Rob tried it. I saw his eyes light up like a little kid, and you were like, "It's good, man." Breakfast food. You had a breakfast food person. So he's been in here to get it. We finished our plates. And now Rob Drummond, Syracuse CFL and NFL alum, a native of Syracuse, Jamesville DeWitt is where he went. Obviously had a tremendous career at Syracuse University on the football program and more than anything else, one of my best friends. So breaking bread together is something we've done for many years. Good. Right, Rob. I, I love, first and foremost, I love when I say hi to you and you, you smile. <laughs> Because we just sat and had, you know, we just had food together. I told you, very few people make me smile, but it's like I always try and surround myself with good people. People make you feel good. People make you feel good about yourself. You know, you're one of those people. Oh, thank you. Okay. Rob is also one of the only people, you, Isaac, and I, in 38 years of my life, are the only people I know that will proudly wear a bucket hat. Oh yeah. And love it. Oh yeah. So. So Isaac has his Cuse one. You got your Syracuse one. I have my Disney one that my mom gave me that used to be her. It's a blue one. used to be hers years ago. And I have a Marywood. And I also just bought a uh, Rebel Leader one. It's teal from down in Florida. Oh, I have my Eagles one, too, now. So yeah. It's not just Syracuse. I mean, I, I love the city that I play for, you know. So, you know, it's, it's someone, you know, born and raised in the city of Syracuse. I always represent my, my, not just my university, but my city as much as I can. And speaking of representation, Fran Brown gets hired as a new head coach. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're in the room, I'm in the room, Bruce Williams is there. There was a bunch of alumni listening around the country and I got to hear from them after the fact. And I knew that no matter what I asked that day, that all, all the work that I tried to do with the alumni, with you and everybody, I had to ask that question. And I'm happy that that echoed. His answer was first and foremost, he said, come around. I want your presence. I want you to be here. Come to practice. If you come to practice, you can come talk to me in my office. Well, we heard that a few months ago. Mm -hmm. What's it been like since he said that? Has he lived up to his work? Oh my God! I mean, he's been, he's been very inviting for um, you know, to us alumni. You know, uh, me personally, I've been having on you know a few uh, health issues in my family. You know, with close friends and everything. I haven't gotten up there as much as I would like to. You know, I will be in the future. You know. As these uh, situations resolve themselves, good job, Josh. You know, but he's definitely been inviting to the, you know, to the, to the alumni base. You know, and it's just for me to, to see him you know, do things where he goes around and cleans up the city. You know, at a, at a, at a at a SU basketball game. You know, he's cleaning up. You know, right behind me. Yeah. So, so he's a man of his word. You know, and he's a man of God. You know, and, and, and he practices what he preaches, and that's just refreshing to see after the after the stint he had with, with Dino Babers. Not that Dino Babers was a was a bad guy or anything of that nature. Dino you know, Babers wasn't really right inviting to us alumni. You know, it, it wasn't inviting to the city. You know, and that's, that's, that's what I think his downfall was. Lions opened up the arms for us to come in. You know, to, to be a bigger part of the university you know, as we were even when we played. So that he told us the door is always open for so we go up there. It's a revolving door policy. You, know, you come in, you, know, you can go out. You know, so the same, the same thing. He said, we can't complain. You know, if we're not up there, we don't come up here to speak to him. We understood that, so we got the message loud and clear. Well, the thing was, it used to be that you weren't welcome over many coaches. So it used to be you weren't welcome. Now Fran is saying, you decide. You're welcome. If you don't show up, then you're telling me you don't want to be here, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of coaches saying, we don't want you here. And it's just 100 percent I mean, it's just that, no, it's just, it's, it's a great feeling knowing that the, the alumni now are going to do as much as we can to see this team successful, whereas under Dino Babers, we didn't feel like we were welcome, so why would you go someplace we don't feel welcome? You know, and that's the one thing I even tell my children. You know, always remove yourself or put yourself in a situation, or don't put yourself in a situation where you don't feel welcome to go. Yeah. Uh, but now I feel welcome, we feel love again, we feel a part of the program again, and that's all we ever wanted. I mean, our glory days, the fanfare, the things that make sure all being cheered on everything, that's over. That's not what we want. We just want to be a part of a program that, that has pride in. When we were on that hill, we had nothing but pride. And we practiced up there, we went to school up there, we, we put our blood, sweat, and tears up there. You know, and that's all, that's all we ever wanted. 
you know, so we just want to go back and give that to the institution that really allowed us to go up and be, you know, the men that we are today. Yeah, and my thing, being around so many alumni in so many different decades, it has nothing to do with ego. No. It has nothing to do with power no. or prestige. No. It has to do uh, with simple love for your university, love for your football team, and a desire to have the brotherhood bridge the gap and for you to know players today so that you can help them today and you can pay it forward. The only thing that the alumni have ever told me they wanted is to have the recognition to be welcomed back in so that they could be a part and they could work together with the current student athletes to try and help them see what they've seen, help them get through something, help them find job placement. And I mean, it's, it's all been a labor of love. And the fact that Fran, number one, answered me the way that he did, number two, has been living by it, and that I have been down to the Boca Bowl and saw him and the coaching staff at a at an event that was put on by the alumni. And I saw him talking with alumni. And he would talk for a few minutes, break everything down, never rush, go on to the next group, talk to them, go on to the next group, talk to them, take a picture with everybody. You can see that picture on X at Call DT. But it's like, I watched him and he's wearing a jersey and a sweatshirt. If you walked into this alumni event, this tailgate, he looked like he was a fan. He looked like he was a dad of a player. He looked like he was a former player. And he was breaking down plays, nuances, and different plans. Like, oh, in this game, you remember in the second quarter of this game when they did this? Well, this is why he went. And he's like, I'm hearing him break down film in front of alumni, and I'm going, this is everything that we talked about and more that we wanted, and I'm watching him engage. He's not going, well, this alumni donates a lot of money. Well, this one ran for a 1,000 yards. He was going to every single person, hey, I'm Fran, what's your name? And he's learning about everybody, and he was taking time. He was giving out his phone number. I just, I appreciate people who are who they say they are. He's, he's honest and he's real. I mean, I, I, the first time I met him in that meeting with him, he was at his press conference, you know, he's a breath of fresh air. He is who he is. And, and, and the one thing I got, I got from that meeting that he was saying that I'm really, you know, got me with the fact that he said, you know, it's just, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be real with you, and 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 I'm that he came from nothing and made himself into something, you know, which, is, which hit me, you know, hit me like a lightning bolt. Because that's just like me. He talked about Camden all the time because he loved his city, he loved his hometown, and, you know, and he wanted to build up his community. When he first came in the he said, "I'm not really supposed to just going to come in here, you know, be here for you know, be here for a couple years and go on to the next. You know, I'm here for a lifetime, whether true or not. You know, the residents are brought up with what he's doing. What head coach?" That's making a million plus dollars a year. Who's going to come in and, and, and clean up a city, or, or, or clean up the Carrier Dome? You know, or yeah. doing your basketball game. He's a man of his word. You know, I've never, in all my years, I've, I've, I've never, never seen, seen a coach. I do that personally, but, but I do it behind closed doors. And it's like you said, so, you know, I don't want the fanfare. I don't want. I don't want the media out for everything. I'm just going to do it because it's the right thing to do. But like you said, he came from nothing and made himself into something. And I respect that so much about that. Well, that's the thing. It's like I literally where we sit for the basketball games for media, he was sitting behind us with his staff and the recruits. And when the recruits left and there was trash everywhere, he, he didn't pick up a box, he didn't pick up his box. He went up and down the aisles for minutes, picking up and stacking boxes, working with his staff to pick up all the trash, everything that's on the ground. He wanted to leave something better than how he found it which is exactly what I get about the football program, yep. is when he leaves his football program someday, hopefully after much success and a lifetime of goodness, or maybe he never leaves it, we'll see, but that he'll leave it better than he found it. Always leave things better than when you got there. You know, that's, that's one thing that Coach Mack used to tell us all the time. You know, one thing that resonated with me throughout my career, throughout wherever I go. I, mean, I always try and see that. I always try and not leave extra work for someone who may be less fortunate than me. And that's one thing Coach Matt told me a long, long time ago. And it was basically instilled with how Fran Brown carries himself. Yeah, you know, and what, what I love about this is I've seen, I've gotten calls from alumni. I've talked to them face to face. I'm hearing energy. Yes. People are smiling. People are excited. People are happy. See, it's not that hard. If you reach out to your alumni, 
and you treat them with respect, then you're going to get more money. Right. You're going to get more of a presence. Right. You're going to get more people at your games. You're going to get more support. You're going to get more recruits. It's all, I mean, literally all Fran had to do was be honest, be nice, spend his time, and be open. He had to be a human being in order to get alumni back. It's, just, it's, it's, it's odd to me that eight years of being a baby, you know, and probably a month and a half or two months for Fran Brown, not seeing him in the city more, you know, you know just randomly, not seeing Dino Baby in eight years. I saw him at the airport, I saw him at the ball once, I saw him down in the city of Syracuse. I've never ran I've never ran into Dino Baby one time. Well, you realize some coaches have come through here, and you think, like, Syracuse is, is not massive, no. right? And I thought that, it's funny you bring that up, I thought that before where I'm like, how has this coach been here for this long and I've never seen him at Wegmans, in the mall, at the like, at Target? I've never ran into the camera in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it was funny, as, as I'm walking out of the airport, I look at him, you know, because I just met him, so I wasn't sure who he was, but I walked by and I'm like, man, it looks like Coach Brown. So then I just kept, I, I keep walking, he stared at me, I stared at him, I kept walking, and I was like, you know what, I stopped for a second, and I walked back over to him, I was like, you know what, sir? Did anybody ever tell you you look like Fran Brown? And he starts laughing. He's like, that's because I am. And I just started laughing. I was like, oh, I apologize. So it's probably wrong. He's like, I thought that was you. So we just started talking about him. And I told him, he's like, you know, because I haven't been around so much because of my mother's cancer and my, my best friend. So I've been struggling a little bit and everything. And he put his hand out. He said, you know, always come around as much as you want. And he gave me the biggest hug. You know, he's just like, man, we always here for you. We're a family. He's like, so you're always welcome to come around and see so if anything's going wrong, if you need us and everything, we're always here for you. And, it, you know, and, I, and as a former player or somebody, you know, I just felt that love. And I just felt like, you know, I need to hear that. I appreciate the coach. Thank you very much. You know, so, and that's, that's, that's all we want as players. You, as a family, you want to feel loved. You want to feel needed. You want to feel, you want, you want to, when they can feel your pain also, you know, in that moment, and my former players have been calling me all the time. Just to make sure I'm okay. Just to make sure my head's right. You know, and I appreciate that so much coming to me. You know? But as I said before, it's a family. It's not just a family. Football. People see the Syracuse football players, and so what we see it as our family, our brothers, you know, the, the guys we, we fought battles and trying to win games of that nature, and that's what it, that's what it's about. It's a family. In closing, for this edition of From Mother's Covered Table, what I want to do, which I tell people, everyone's welcome to my show. Come as you are, and hopefully you leave better than you came in. Same for me, learning from all of you, learning from you. But I want to say. For, uh, I would like to pray today for everybody that's watching and listening. I want to pray for your mom. I want to pray for your friend. I want to pray for my loved ones, your loved ones, and everybody that's that's here with us watching and listening, and all of your loved ones for health, safety, happiness, to be yourself, and for that to be enough, for you to have all the gifts that you need for God to do His will and be well, for your life to be long and fun and go by slowly. <laughs> and for you to be healthy and be able to handle well whatever comes your way, be it something in your power or out of your power. I pray that you all have a great day, you realize your blessings, and that you be a blessing to someone else. Amen. And we move forward. Yeah. All you can do it. God bless you all. Rob Drummond, one of the greatest to ever do it, but as I always tell you, whatever you saw on the football field is light years below the friend that I get to have, the brother I get to have in my family. You don't get family like this without God making it happen. I love you, bro. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you, Fran, for what you're doing. Thank you to the staff. We'll talk to you soon.